Have you ever wondered how much do you want to charge for monthly rent? You charge too little and you'll struggle to find tenants and you charge too much and then you'll get a ton of applications that you're like, I don't know what to do with this. So if you're in that position where you have no idea how much to charge, you got to watch this video. Hi there. Today's video, I want to share four awesome ways to figure out how much to charge for rent. And I'll also show you a quick and easy, super easy peasy tool that has been super helpful in my life in figuring how much to charge for rent. And it's gonna absolutely make your life so much easier. Send out a shout out to everyone who's joined the subscriber community. You, I love you guys. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell button. It'll mean the world to me. Anyway, let's get right into it. So the first rule is there's a guiding rule of thumb that you can use based on the home value. Now, how this works is that typically you'll see best practices. They'll say charge between 0.7% to 1% of the home value. Now, you're probably wondering, how do I figure out the home value? So if you bought your property recently, you'll know your home value. Now, if you don't know, you can check MLS really easy or Trulia in, for those who are in the States or Zillow. Or you could just ask a real estate agent and they'll tell you your home market value. So how this rule of thumb works is that you take 0.7% of, say, a home value that's $250,000, and then technically you could charge rent of $1,750. Uh, same with if you used 1%, then you can charge rent of $2,500. Now, huge caution with using these rule of thumbs. These are simple calculations, and it really doesn't really take the realistic rent that you can actually charge in that area. For example, in Ottawa, there's no way you can charge even 1% of any home value unless you're looking at very sketchy neighborhoods in Ottawa. I'm sure in other parts of Canada, Canada, you know, you're probably, if you're stressing on the 1% rule, then you probably could blindside in looking at areas that are kind of, that are kind of sketchy. With housing prices going up so fast, if your home, if you had a home for 10 years and you bought the home, say at $250,000 in the beginning, but then your home value went up to $600,000, it's going to be very, very hard to get up using this guy in rule of thumb, a 0.7% to 1%. So that's why I really want to introduce the second and third uh, methods, which are actually way more fruitful. And I do a demo of the tool that I use all the time. Number two. What's another way to figure out how to charge rent? Well, you can do a scan of Kijiji or sites like rentfaster.com. You check Facebook Marketplace. You could check PadMapper and they'll give you a bunch of properties you can look at within an area and you could do a comparable of the, your rental property. Now make sure that it has similar amenities. So for example, if your property has a pool, well, then you want to check comparable properties with a pool. No, I'm not saying to buy a property with a pool. I actually am. <laughs> super against it because it's high maintenance but anyway that was probably a bad example okay so you had an amenity where you had extra parking like two bit two parking spots you might want to compare properties that offer two parking spots because that might be more valuable in that neighborhood if you don't even want to do all that work then you could easily again just ask your real estate agent and they'll i'm sure they'll give you a huge range of comparables and that's a great way to get a gauge of how much rent to charge for that property oh i forgot to mention one thing make sure that when you're doing the scan of those article like of those rental um, ads like say on Kijiji check how many eyeballs have looked at it meaning the views because that will tell you the interest in that property typically if there's been a ton of views that means that's the right price or it's a fancy looking property but third way to figure out how much rent to charge is call around don't be shy call your property manager they are usually very nice they can help you out or you call your real estate agent and they'll even tell you how the market's like they'll tell you is a hot rental market or it's a bit slow and they'll tell you um they can even give you just a range and they'll even give you insight on specific property details like how much is a two-bedroom condo going for in that particular complex because property managers a lot of them have a big suite of m properties that they m need to manage same with a real estate agent they'll say oh yeah that building that soho building one bedrooms are easily going for 1950 for a one bedroom the fourth method is gauge on the popularity of that price i always do a litmus test so what i do is i post an ad on kijiji and facebook marketplace and i see how long on how many eyeballs are looking at it now you could see that kijiji the view count and then you also see the responses if you're if you're posting it for three days and you don't get a peep or you get very little interest that's probably a gauge of 
your price is probably not that great. Now, if that's assuming you did a really good rental ad description, you had beautiful pictures, probably you got to, you know, change the price up. So you may uh, increase it by $25 or decrease it by $25. Now, in the next part of this video, I want to share you this awesome tool that I use, and it's going to save you a ton of time. So I'm going to do a brief demo of using the awesome tool called Rental Meter. I've been using this for a long, long time. This is actually my favorite tool. It's the go-to tool for me. When I look at a new area and I'm not familiar with the housing prices and I'm just studying it to just become a neighborhood expert, this is my go-to tool. This tool. And I want to show the pro version of it. It has more things in it that I love about it that I really want to share with you. Now, you don't have to get the pro version. The free version does the trick as well. But anyways, I just wanted to give you a demo of the pro version because it gives you a much more accurate range of the type of property that you're looking for. Do is you type in an address. So you go ahead and type in an address. Then you can select, okay, how many bedrooms you want for that property. So if you have a, say, go, well, let's assume we're going to look at a two-bedroom house, then you put in two bedrooms. And then you can actually go and look at the different ages of the rent so instead of defaulting to 12 months you could go back 14 months 16 months 18 months but we're going to keep it super easy peasy we're going to keep it 12 months just to look at the rents for a two-bedroom home in that area then you can also check the search radius you change it from automatic but then you could go in different distances you can increase the radius if you want to actually collect more numbers then you can also check the building type now there's a condo versus a house so it just narrows down um, for example if you're if you have a two-bedroom house that you want to compare rent to you actually don't want to compare to a condo because obviously it's comparing apples to oranges so in this case i'm going to select the house slash duplex and then i'm going to do a search function so then when you enter it you could then it spits on a map and the uh, type of rents that you can collect. It gives you a radius of the number of properties that it's comparing to it gives you an average rent as well as a medium and then gives you so then if you want to check out, okay, you're wanting to rent out a two-bedroom home, you're thinking, okay, can I rent it out for $2,000? You enter that number, and then all of a sudden it spits you out where it fits, either in the green zone or in the red zone. Now, of course, you can say you didn't want to use pro version because that's the paid version. I'm going to sh now do a demo of just using the regular rentometer.com. You type in the address, you can type in the rent, and it gives you a selection of choosing the number of bedrooms in that property. But then you can't go back in time on the rent. You can't go back like more than 12 months or 18 months. Um, also, it automatically gives you a search radius, so you can't actually choose that. You can't actually choose the building type as well. So then you're going to get a mix of apples and oranges when you're looking at the um, rental ranges in that area. So that's the only caution with using the free tool. But otherwise, I think for most people, this would work. Uh, I've been using the free tool for a very long time. Some, and then um, there is a trial version where you could do the pro version. And you can I think that gives you a certain number of uh, search functions. I think for most people, that's probably more than enough. So then you just could do the trial and then that's it. Anyways, I hope you found this super helpful. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. It will mean the world to me and I'll love you forever. Anyways, share your comments below. What other tools do you use to figure out how much rent to charge? Again, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification. It's free and I'll see you next time in the next video.